I don't mean a place of recreation. I mean a place of a recreation, reproducing yourself and your personality. And through this intimate contact, it was possible to become a stronger individual even though you lived in a more collective environment. <coughs> that world has been eroded and subverted steadily by the encroachment of the factory, of the office, of the supermarket into our own personal lives and finally into our own heads. We think in terms of buying and selling more and more. And I come across this repeatedly when somebody says to me, I don't buy that idea, and in which I respond, I'm not selling it. <laughs> and I've used this line over and over again because it is, to me, the typification of the way in which people deal with idea, deal with culture, deal with the most intimate relationships they have. They invest in a marriage. Who the hell ever invested in a marriage? In a business, perhaps, yes, but not in a marriage. So people, in a sense, are being hollowed out. It isn't only television that is doing it. Television, as it were, is filling an increasingly empty vessel. And that's what's happening. And there, taking over the world of imagination, taking the, over that world, that dream world, that magnificent dream world that the child still has and which the rest of civilization repeatedly represses in the course of what we call maturation or becoming mature. Television has begun to fill that in with its synthetic plots, with its advertising, with its one-dimensional pictorial image of what reality is all about. This terrifying problem has made us ask the all-important question that most people do when they encounter an analyst today. Not why do I have a twitch, not why do I uh, have a uh, shudder, why is it that I have dreams that wake me up, why do I wake up screaming at night? Those were the questions that you went to in the 1930s if you had a psychological problem and if you went to a therapist. Now they go around and they ask the question, who am I? Who am I? What am I? Why am I? And the key thing that is involved here is what they're asking is, what is their place in the world? Because there is no place in the world for people to be human again. There is no place in the world for people to be personal and to have a personality. And for that reason, we go madly and insanely after all kinds of fashions today to decorate what is a very deep sense of hollowness inside us. We cover ourselves up. We cover ourselves up with different hairdos. We cover ourselves up with different styles of clothing. We cover ourselves up with all kinds of accoutrements. We have to wear Thunderbirds to play Indian. Or we have to wear leather jackets to be tough, even though we may be accountants somewhere. Or we have to dress like prostitutes so we look interesting, even though we may be secretaries somewhere. All of this, we wear boots in the summertime. Who the hell ever wore boots in the summertime? <laughs> but all of this is meant to make us interesting to ourselves because we are so hollowed out by the breakdown of community, by the mutual networks of support systems, by the rich articulation of a spontaneous cultural life that comes out of the streets and that comes from the intercourse of past as well as present and hopefully future through the different generational interactions that exist. And we are faced with the real problem not only of whether or not we have power anymore over our lives, but who are we and why are we alive? And that becomes the great therapeutic problem in psychiatry today. This points to a very deep sense of disempowerment, as I said, that emerges from the large corporations, that emerges from the invasion, of the enormous concentration of the state, and that emerges very significantly from the marketplace into every recess in which, into which we could retreat 30, 40, 50 years ago, or even 20 years ago. The counterculture was an attempt in the 1960s to recreate again a community in which we could retreat a network in which we could again develop a sense of identity, a sense of solidarity, a sense of community that has been eroded steadily, not only by television, but by the marketplace, by the buyer-seller relationship, by the reduction of everything to an object, to a thing, to an investment that you either buy, that you sell, feedback, input, output. And that's the problem we face.